Hey everybody, welcome to a very remotely recording Watches with Dennis. My name is Dennis and this is Tony, which is hello. why the screen says Dennis and Tony, because we are on our annual Texas Pinball Festival road trip, but this is not a pinball channel. We're not here to, I do have a link to the Eclectic Gamers channel if you want to watch that, but the reason why we're recording here is this time we actually uh, merged the hobbies and did, yep. uh, did some watch uh, field tripping. So hopefully... The internet at the hotel holds up. If not, uh, if you have any issue with the volume, let me know. But we we very rapidly tried to get all this stuff configured. So anyway, uh, there haven't been any past videos to to talk about. So what we're going to do is we actually went to uh, four different watch stores yesterday and looked at uh, about a half dozen brands, I would say, in terms yeah. of one or, one or both of us trying on models. And so we're going to go through that. If you see me looking off to the side, like I'm looking up into space, it's because I'm using the TV to, to dual screen split so I can access my, uh, my footage of the actual watches that we went and saw. So you'll be able to kind of get a sense of what we're, what we're talking about. Other than that, because I haven't had any videos in the last week to discuss, I guess we'll do the, the wristwatch check that we like to do on the live stream. So I am wearing... Uh, Zenith uh, Chronomaster Original, which I have not been wearing very much this year. Yeah, but uh, because every time I think about wearing, I wear something else. But what do you have? <laughs> I've I've got my Oris Big Crown Pointer Date, but I can't get my arm close enough to. Really yeah, look we at. we have to be far enough back that we could stay in frame. <laughs> frame. And he's in the lowest chair to have ever been built. <laughs> it, 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 so, like I, I, I was tempted. There's an ottoman. I was thinking about trying because it might be a little taller, but it's a. Uh, uh, but, but we were we were afraid mistakes would be made. And yeah. Good morning, Kevin. Hope things are going well for you in Florida. We are down in Texas, so we are we're somewhat closer now than than normal. Than yeah. normal. Uh, so anyway, uh, and I'm about oh gosh, I guess what uh, two hours earlier than usual because I wasn't planning to be able to do a live stream at all. But then I thought, you know what, we're we're going to check out some watch stores, so we're going we're going to take the chance of it, and I'll see if we can put something out on Saturday. And figured folks could just watch the recording. So and good morning, Tuna. Hope things are going well for you. It's actually probably a less uh, insane time out in the UK, I would assume, this early. Because yeah, I mean, so yeah, well, I guess it depends earlier. what his schedule is, really. Yeah. And thank you for being a 99 Set Club member. I appreciate it. Tony doesn't care. So, um, the so the first place we ended up going to is Highland Park, yeah. which is our Highland Park Village, which is kind of the, would you say it's the middle class area of Dallas? My daughter would call it bougie. Okay, bushy. Yes, it was very nice houses that were. I I was surprised how close residential homes were. Yeah, they and they, they were nice. They, 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 they it was really nice architecture. The houses were pretty cool. Mm. And this was the first place when I did a little bit of research before we drove down uh, that I picked to go because that is where the high end boutiques of the watches are. That. I, uh, that w I wanted to, to experience, but we don't have in Kansas City. So, uh, so the, yeah, so he's getting closer. I can read, yeah. read the, read the, to re read the I, chat. I, I can kind of make out my name. So I, I would, I boot it up on your phone and, uh, and, and look at it through that. that, was, that, that was, there's that all was, sorts of tricks we, we do on YouTube. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, yes. So Tuna says, Hi Tony, and he laughs and says, "You look shorter than usual." Yeah, yeah Tony is not. <laughs> Tony is taller than me normally. I am as as low as this wheelie chair will go, and he is in the. There's only one office chair in the hotel room, so even the hotel room is quite spacious, but it doesn't have a lot of furniture. So he's in. He's sitting in the uh, in the uh, recliner. So. I'm trying to figure and, out how to mute my phone. And I always just I have to just hold down the volume button. There we go. But your model is probably fancier than mine. No, no, that was and, I and good morning, pre two. Yes, yes, it is an early stream, a couple hours early because we're on vacation time out here, uh, sharing a room here for the for the Texas pinball event. Which, well, I'll try not to talk about that at all. So anyway, so the high end boutiques were were uh, all at the at the Village Highland Village Park. So that's where we went first. Oh, oh good morning, Scotty. Uh, Scotty pinball, are you just, guys just getting in? No, we came in Thursday night and. Uh, so we went because the, the show didn't start until late, uh, like uh, 4 p.m. on Friday. We had the day to do whatever. And so we went and checked out overly expensive watches. And uh, I would we, say overly. Okay. Some well, of them. Somewhere. Were, we, start, some of them we, started, we started extreme. 
I'm not doing the hand thing right. We started extreme and then we moved to more set kind of. That was kind of the pattern. Not not yeah, entirely. It was but, it was it was there. But and Preju just said, I overheard Highland Park Village. I'm from Dallas. Surprisingly, you have better luck there than the malls like North Park and Eisenhower Jewelers. Or Eisman. Ah. Eisman. Yeah, so actually one of the one of the people who was at uh, Bookendorf's, which uh, jewelers at the Galleria Dallas, which we did hit, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, he did recommend Eis Eisman's uh, for a couple of brands. Unfortunately, <laughs> there were multiple traffic. The weather down here has been horrible. We, yes. have, we have been on the fringe of it, so we've never been in a lot, um, but it's always just been really, really close. And and so anyway. Uh, they they recommended Eisman's because they have Parmigiani and they have Ulysse Nardon. But we had already driven to Highland Park, which was south of Frisco, where the pinball show is. And then we drove back up north to get to Galleria Dallas. And then we would have driven back south to get. And I was at that point, I'm like, I'm done driving. And it had been um, raining and uh, I, it was being. It was like, I thought about staying off the toll ro roads, but it doubled the drive times. And the toll roads, I didn't have a problem with the tolls. I had a problem with there were accidents both ways. And so. Google's all like, this is a bad play. Don't, don't do it. Uh, we did it a couple times, but I wasn't going to do it three. So, so anyway, we won't be talking about those, those two brands today. I'm going to try and do the, the screen share so you guys can, can get a look. So we started with the, uh, with the AP boutique. Um, and there was not a lot there. Now I'm, I'm going to say up front that everybody, we met all the boutiques we went into, they were all polite. No one was rude. No one made it feel like they were trying to get us out of there or anything like that. But I took steps with AP because I know they're right. <laughs> so when I came in, I went up to the guy. I said, hey, we're in town from Kansas City. You know, we don't have an AP uh, distributor in, in Kansas City. And he goes, oh, well, we actually cover the Kansas City region. This Dallas is the flagship for Kansas City. It's like, oh, cool. He's like, so is there anything you want to look at? And I go, what do you got in the way of 1159s? Which, of course, he was taken aback by because no one wants to talk about the 1159. I didn't want to talk about the 1159, <laughs> but I knew it Play would be a way for him to think that I wasn't just yet another guy coming in for a Royal Oak, which was true. I wasn't planning coming in to really look at a Royal Oak uh, either. We were actually, this was going to be a deprioritized boutique to hit, but it was the first one we actually saw when we were, when we were walking uh, towards Vacheron, which we will, we will get to. So Anyway, so I uh, I asked them what they had, and they actually had a couple of 1159s. The one you see on the screen is the one they actually had in stock that, that, that they got out of the display and let me try on, which it's okay. It's it. The problem I had with it, and I don't know what you're, you didn't try it on. I didn't saw try it on. It, I saw it. Is the, the, let me get it so you can see the mouse. The dial here, this is, I think this is the first time I've ever said this. The dial looks better in photos than it does in real life. And I, I think I need to clarify that a little bit. It, it it plays with the light a lot more than you see in this photo. The problem is, and maybe it was just the bright lights of the jeweler, it plays with the light so much, I actually kind of had trouble looking at certain elements of it because like this one was not the worst one. We went and looked at some of the other Royal Oaks still in the display and I couldn't even read part of the dial because there was so much light from the case reflecting like the yeah. indices are blending in with the patterning. This is a really, this is a very bi surprisingly busy with the light pattern that I'm, I'm pointing and I can't see because I'm doing it all the way off over here because uh, that's where the screen is that, that I'm looking at. Uh, it's, we're using the TV as our secondary display, and it's way up on the on the on the cabinet thing, so it's way far away, but it's huge, so we can we can see it. So anyway, it was um, uh, it looked nice. It it wouldn't be a watch that I would get. I in terms of time plus date, there are plenty of other watches I think look better. Uh, this was the strap you see on the screen was the strap they had on it. I did not like the strap. Maybe if it broke in more, it would it would be better. I asked them if it came on other straps and you can get it on alligator leather, which is, that's usually one that needs to be broken in as well, but can be comfortable once, once, once yeah. it is that way. And I think they also said they, they would, they would sell it with a rubber strap if you wanted it on that, which they had the rubber straps just by themselves in the display case. And I'm sure those are great. They look high end rubber straps. I like a lot. Yeah. And so I'm sure they do a very nice one, but anyway, so we weren't in the AP boutique for very long. I'd say maybe five minutes. Maybe. Yeah. And most of that was just like, 
because I'm assuming because it was the AP boutique. And I started, I started to get confused with other people later because they were like, you will hold your wrist here. We will put the watch on you. You will not drop this watch. Right. They didn't Which say any sense. of that. They were super polite, but it was just kind of like the guy's actually moving my hand around, strapping the strap down. And I'm like, I've never had like, if I go to like Tivil and they show me a Submariner or whatever, they don't, they just hand it to me. Right. They have me take off my watch so they could keep track of whose watch is whose. Yeah. And then they hand it to me over. They have me sit and then have me put it on. Right. They don't put it on me. And so later, I was with this other guy and he was just like, he's like trying to hand me the watch and I'm thinking he's wanting to put it, put it on me like some, like some engagement ring. And he's kind of like, oh, well, if you're, doing, if you're doing this, I need your hand this way. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were insisting you had to put it on me. And he's like, no, who would do that? I'm like, AP would do that. But anyway, so this was the one, this was the one we went ahead and checked out at, uh, at the AP boutique. Tuna writes and says, dare I say it, but the 1159 looks nicer than the Royal Oak. Uh, I think that I think that you are right, depending on the texture of the Royal Oak. I think it comes down to the dial textures, uh, because the Royal Oaks that they had there, at least with the amount of light that they were throwing through those jewelry cases, yeah. made them look extremely busy. So much so, like, I'm like, can you tell the time in the sun? Because yeah, and, and it could be, like you said, because of the light, where, and they were in the cases, and there was a lot of mirroring, so there was light coming from a lot of different directions on it. Tony didn't ask to try anything on at the AP boutique. No, this was I, the only I, watch we had them get out. Yeah, that, that was fine. I, I so, don't care for any of it. So, so anyway, uh, Tuna asks, why don't they call it mm -hmm. the 12 o'clock? I, I used to struggle remembering the name, and then I realized, oh, it's a minute towards midnight, and... I I'm sure I'm sure marketing probably had something like this is going to be just before the dawn of a new era, <laughs> right before the time turns over. It's eleven fifty nine. Do you know where your children are with your royal oak? If not, if take my, this fashion watch <laughs> instead. They, if my children have my royal oak, there's a lot. It of It would have been so great if they had had a star wheel. I would have liked to have that seen would have that been nice because that's really cool. But I, I'm sure but they didn't have one. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure they're sold out. So, so any, anyway, so that was the, that was the first place we went ahead and hit. The second place we then went to was the one Tony and I, I think both were the most excited to go and check out. And yes. that was Vacheron Constantin because we both have a particular watches that we like out of, out of Vacheron and we don't have them in Kansas city. Right. So we go in, they were really friendly. So AP was polite. Uh, Vacheron was friendly. And so we're, we go in and uh, I will, I, I didn't ask for this up front because again, I'm, I'm doing the, I'm doing the, let's ask for something less popular first and then <laughs> and talk about something more popular. So I did ask if they had a 222 exhibition model I could try on just to get a sense of the sizing. And they were like, no, uh, no, sorry. We don't, we don't have any 222s. <laughs> now we later heard yeah. at another <laughs> distributor because, uh, because, you know, all these watch people know each other that, <laughs> that we said that to the guy at uh at the Galleria Dallas, the Bookendorf's. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, I'm pretty sure they do have one two 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 in their in their safe. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't ask them, hey, you know, I mean, you, do you know who I am? I have pinball machines. Why don't you crack open that safe and show me this watch that I am absolutely not buying today? So, especially after I told her that would that would maybe be like a retirement watch for me <laughs> in terms of where I'm at with it mentally right now. But anyway, they were very, very nice. So I actually uh, spoke first and asked them about the 1921, which is a watch we both like mm -hmm. the look of. Now they had one on display in a case. However, they, in the back, she's like, you know, we have the 40 millimeter in the case, but I think she just looked me up and down and goes, you know, we have a 36 and a half millimeter <laughs> little, little boy. I think was what she, wanted to, she was too nice to say it. So I said, I would really like to try on a 36 and a half. And she's like, do you want to try it in pink gold or white gold? I'm like, I'm only trying to get a sense of the sizing, whatever one is easiest to get out. So she got out both. Of so, course she did. So anyway, so I tried on the white one specifically. So that's the one I've, I've thrown up on the screen. And at least for me at 36 and a half millimeter, this was really wearable. It actually it worked, looked good. I think it's, I should have thought about this, but because the case is square, <clears throat> it feels like it, it wears bigger than it is. Like mm -hmm. you normally associate with rectangular watches. The lugs aren't particularly long, but factoring in the lugs with the square case, it occupied a good a good amount of, of risk real estate. And it was very legible 
at normal watch reading. So it's not like sometimes with a 36, it's not the size on the wrist I'm worried about. I'm thinking I'm going to have to be like right on top of it. To and be able and to for it. a busy watch, maybe that'd be true. But for time only watch is. Yeah, These no, giant brigade I thought, numerals. I thought it looked great. It looked, yeah, it looked really good. So, so I tried that on, and then you, Tony, tried on. Uh, I wasn't sure you want, if you were going to try anything on. You go, hey, I yeah, they didn't have the overseas. I wanted to try. They yeah. didn't have the overseas. They I had wanted. one display overseas, and it wasn't the model you were. Yeah, watching. all the the only overseas they had were like the jewel encrusted ones, and that's not a look I like. But they had this. Yeah, they had they, they had the retrograde day day uh, patrimony. Uh, that I was able to uh, try on. And I got to tell you, that watch was comfortable, looked good, uh, fit real well on me. And yeah, I, I, if I had, you know, just the 50 grand laying around, uh, I, I would have probably gone for it because it just looks so good. And that's one of the things that I think is that I'd always, when I started looking into, you know, just looking at models in general, that that stood out to me about Vacheron is they have, especially what I think of as the patrimony, uh, a dress watch line, but a dress watch line where the watch sizes actually go quite big. Mm -hmm. So people with larger wrists who want a decent wrist presence dress watch, the only two brands that jump out in my head are IWC through their Portuguese line, right, and then and then Vacheron, right, and and, and for to be a dress watch that has complications as interesting as, as the retrograde, uh, I, I mean I just appreciate that. And they had they had several patrons. They even had the uh, uh, the the full calendar hmm. one, but that was I this was the one I was most interested in looking at. Uh, but yeah, it. I, I was real happy. I mean, they were super nice to us, and 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 like I said, that the watches were all very nice. Uh, the only other thing they had in there that I, I had, I was mildly interested in uh, was some of the fifty sixes, but they didn't have any of the fifty six, the specific fifty six models I like. Uh, mm, so. Yeah. I didn't bother to ask about those. Yeah, I, I did ask about one other thing with them, and that was the uh, tuneau shaped cases. I really like the tuneau barrel shaped cases that Vacheron does, but I wasn't sure if they still made them. I've seen a number of them used, you know, browsing Chrono 24. So I asked about it because they had one of their Vacheron books was open mm -hmm. when we were waiting for them to get the watches out. So I was flipping through it and I saw some of the what looked like modern tuneau shaped Vacheron watches. So I asked if they had any. Of those, so I could get because I've never tried on a, a two no shaped case, so I don't know if it wear like. Do you wear it like a rectangular watch, and you go for that sort of sizing? Do you need to make it a little bit bigger because it's sort of it's sort of not Pretty. a rectangle? Yeah, I don't I don't know. So anyway, I was just kind of like, well, while I'm here, I'll I'll ask about it. And she's like, no, they still. I'm like, do they not make them anymore? Because uh, I wasn't sure. And she goes, actually, they are in production. However, all of the two no shaped case watches currently only go to the flagship stores. So she says, if you want to go in person and try one on, you got to go to New York, Miami, or Beverly Hills. We will never get them. And I'm like, okay. I have no I, plans to go to any of those cities like, anytime soon. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, it'd be an interesting trip. But but I'm just like, what a weird thing. That actually came up in some discussions later at another mm -hmm. place where it's kind of like, who, who gets to have what? Uh, and how fair is that to the people trying to sell the watches? But right. but I but that one that was probably my my highlight in terms of watches to actually get to look at. But I mean, it, was, it is yeah. a Holy Trinity brand, so let's so let's be fair. So. It was it was the one I was most excited mm -hmm. about going to look at mm -hmm. uh, of everything because, like I said, I, I I was I was wanting to see the overseas, which again they didn't have the one I wanted, uh, which was n no surprise because it's the blue. Oh yeah, the, the blue overseas that everybody that likes. Loves. Yeah, because it looks uh, so good. Yeah, uh, and the patrimony. So yeah, yeah, no, I was super happy. That was great. Yeah. So uh, catching <laughs> up on the chat, Pritu says, laughing. <laughs> Dennis, spot on from Automa themselves. The name eleven fifty nine is derived from the last minute before the new day begins, symbolizing. I should do that as Batman, symbolizing the anticipation of a new dawn and a new chapter for Automa PK. Swear to me. It's a bad chapter. Well, <laughs> well, they've made some improvements as it's gone along, in my opinion. But it, it started on shaky ground. And Tuna says, us peasants only get the cast-offs. Well, yeah. 
I mean, I wouldn't have thought of all the stuff. I wouldn't have thought I could see like, given how pop. I mean, they didn't know maybe up front how popular it would be, but you, I would think like they put the two 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 in the flagships, not some two no shaped. Who wears two no shaped watches? I don't, know. I don't know. I have noticed a lot of people wearing watches around here in Dallas far more than yes. like where in in Kansas City. Oh, I see watches all the time. They're all from Apple. Yeah, but it's I, all I, I do watches. see. They're all smart watches. But here, I actually saw a lot of people wearing non smart watches. So been very very interesting. Very interesting. And Scotty saying Nordman has spoken. That's, <laughs> that's my my I use the Batman voice for a, a pinball bit. So I guess pinball ended up coming up again in the discussion. Now, before we left uh, the the village, we did end up hitting one more place that I had no intention of going to, and that's Panerai. But I thought it was right there on the way back to yeah. the car, and I thought, okay, I have maybe I'm not being fair, and I probably wasn't being fair. I was like, because I just have a stereotype that they all look the same. That stereotype is true, and and they're all way too big. That stereotype is not true. However, <laughs> however, uh, the way things start, we're actually on this instance. I'm going to work a little bit back. So, <laughs> so um, they did end up getting out for me this watch, which is a Luminar Dew. Uh, what is it? The Pam Zero One Two Seven Three. Again, apologies for me looking off to the side. And this was a smaller watch. This is a 38 millimeter watch, and it fit very, very well. The reason why I tried this watch on is because I put on another watch before because I wanted to, they had one of their carbon fiber watches. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I want to check out the carbon fiber watch. And so they're like, which one? And I point and they get it out and they're putting it on my wrist and they're looking at me and I'm looking at the watch. And this is before I even rolled did the wrist roll to look at it. And the what I can't remember her name. There were a couple of people who were helping us, but. Yeah, they were super. Uh, the they friendly, were, like the were, friendliness. The cheaper we got, the like, I'm going to say Vacheron was cheaper. The, I guess so let's move down. The lower down the the tiers you went, the nicer they got. Yeah, so, that's very true. So, but uh, so we have like two people. There's no one else in there, so they're helping us out. Plus a security guy who I think was la laughing at. Oh, it was at, worth the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at me, uh, and because because one of them she goes, you know, you might you might need a forty. Or a thirty-eight, <laughs> and I, and she might have said a forty-two, but so anyway, so this was the watch that I had on, and I I look at it and I look at her. I don't see my wrist anymore, and I look up at her and I say, "What size is this?" Because I thought I I thought I just assumed it was a forty-four, and she goes, "This is forty-seven." <laughs> Oh, it was so and, funny. And, that's, and the reflection of the door of the glass, I saw the the security guy snicker when I said, I look like I just got out my dad's watch. It was so and bad. Just, and, and so I'm like, put it away, put it away. But Tony's all like, no, no, let me try it. Let me try it on. Let me try it on. Tony, how how was this? How was this watch? I like you know I liked it a lot better than the other Panerai I, I had tried on. Uh, I thought it looked better and it was it was considerably lighter being the carbon fiber. I and I mean I've got an eight and a half inch wrist. It it, it looked fine on me, but uh, oh it was so funny. It was, yeah. I, it, it was the only time in all of our watch looking that I I kind of wanted to be the 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 Instagram guy and pull up the camera for the picture just because it was so huge on Dennis's wrist. It, it was it was I the biggest watch I ever owned was the Tudor Black Bay Bronze in terms of lug to lug. I mean cuz I think my G-Shock might be 47 across, but it's not long. Right. But my longest watch in terms of wrist overhang was the was the Black Bay Bronze which was about like 52.2 millimeters or, or whatever and it didn't overhang. Right. I don't know what the lug, the lug the lug on this thing is or was, but uh, the strap came inwards. But, it came inwards to go under his wrist. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. down. It was angled in. Yeah, I know. And uh, where I had to load this here on London Jewelers because I don't think we checked. We checked this morning the Panerai site. This watch is not in the lineup anymore, and so I think maybe I'm gonna. It was my fault. I did point it out, but I want to blame them and, and say they were trying to get rid of old stock and they saw me and then they were like, 
a mistake has been made, but we have to <laughs> let him try it on now. The strap was almost too big for the, my wrist. It was, I was, it was very light though. I will say that's the first carbon fiber watch I've actually handled. Yeah, it was. It was super light. So, so and I liked the I, I, I liked the blue and black. I th- I thought it looked. Oh really, no, it looked it, it, it looks it great. looks way better than this photo. Oh yeah, it way it better. It it actually did look pretty pretty good. But um, anyway, <laughs> I was just like, mm, I, to be fair, it wasn't like I was like they were like. You need, little boy, you need something. <laughs> you need a child. You need our child's selection. We got to go pull something out of the ladies' we, line. We might need to get you a radio mirror or something. <laughs> just, this is not the case for you. Well, and I can appreciate that they were 100% this isn't for you. Oh, yeah. They weren't trying. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't pulling. Oh no, that looks great. No, we, no, no. that, that, that works like, for you. They were just like, we have carbon fiber and other sizes, smaller sizes, boy sizes. <laughs> Not man sizes, boy sizes. We no. would be embarrassed to have our name on this with you wearing it. The, the blue watch that I showed uh, before, um, um, probably a little too elegant, I would say. In the in the, it was still pretty sporty, but but in the sense that I'll put it back on the screen. But it's this is very reflective, very and of course people know I love this sunburst style, but um, it made it awfully fashiony or or yeah. elegant. It wore well though. I will say it wore well, but it's a weird uh, hodgepodge of like the crown guard and all this very sporty uh, small second style. But then it's just it's so shiny. I don't know. It was weird. Not not my thing. But that one fit at least. So yeah. it's like okay. It actually uh, seemed to wear really comfortable on the on the leather strap too. So so kudos on that. But <sighs> I don't know. I'd have to be more careful or ask like hey, what's the diameter. <laughs> I didn't know they made a 47. I thought, I thought, come on, no one's going to buy a 47. Except tell me, all like, this wears, this wears really good. Yeah, wow. it did wear really I good. Can, I can, I can read a watch for once. Tuna, tuna <laughs> shares, visiting Panerai, the shame of it. And we probably have Panerai in Kansas City. We do. But, but since it was on the way back to the car, I was just like, uh, they look, no one's in there. They have a security guy and he's yeah, bored. The only, the, the only two places in Highland Park that I think we skipped is we, we didn't go into Rolex because obviously we have tons of Rolex mm. uh, and we didn't go into Cartier. Right. And, uh, and they do have a Harry Winston. Oh uh, yeah. But, uh, but I said, I wasn't sure how much of the store would even be watches because they're mostly known as a jewelry brand, um, which I mean, Cartier is too, but you know, yeah. Cartier is all. Anyway, we, we saw it. We have seen, at least I end up seeing some Cartier later. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, want, Cartier. I didn't have any of them get them, get any of them out. So I'm not going to show any on the screen. But uh, yeah, but moving up the chain. So then we ended up going to the uh, Galleria Dallas. Dallas. Gal- yeah, Galleria Dallas, which is a which is a mall, and they have they have several jewelers there, as you would probably expect. And so we went to Bookendorf's because Bookendorf's has a couple of brands that we do not have in Kansas City. They don't have Chopard. We don't have Chopard. Right. We don't have Zenith. Correct. And. I don't think we have Mont Blanc. We might. I wasn't sure. But they had Mont Blanc here, and I was like, I've never gone and handled Mont Blanc yeah. watches. So I, I was like, that's where I was curious. So we drove then we drove back up north to hit that place. So and I see pre two has shared. I should have mentioned the good experience at Highland are with Rolex. You will get shunned for Rolex at other stores in Dallas. And we did not go into the Rolex section of uh Bookendorf's, yeah. which they had that segregated off into an entirely other area. But okay. Uh, that's nice to know, pre two. Um, I'm still on my Tibble list uh, for my for son. Yourself. Yeah, uh, I think it's been about ten months. I do, I check in about quarterly with them. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start with Chopard uh, because they did not have a very big selection. They it was almost all Alpine. It was there was no LUC. There was no there was no eighteen sixteen or whatever. I'm all these numbers are trying to blend. The nice cool salmon dial. Yeah. I knew they wouldn't have that. Because that thing is waitlisted. Right. But I did finally get a chance to try on an Alpine Eagle. I believe I tried on the 41 millimeter. Uh, it wore very well. This has been an interesting design. Uh, I, I prefer the LUC watches, but the eagle eye texture that they do, hence the name, uh, on the dial is really cool mm-hmm. in the light. And uh, I, I've always found this as a one where you kind of get this a bit of an homage, or I do, a bit of an homage vibe, because you have the screws on it, which remind me of the Royal Oak, and then you have the case flanks that remind me of the Nautilus, but it doesn't look like either of those watches. 
because the shapes yeah. are different. Its shape is different. Than it doesn't. It so, doesn't have a. So this is a way where I'm like, I feel like they definitely poached. Like these two watches are really popular, but let's do our own thing and not Christopher Ward it and just glue like twelve concepts together. So anyway, it's a nice looking watch. I don't think. I think one of our regular. View, I can't remember the name. It might be Scotty, one of the ninety nine cent club members. Um, I think he may have one of these. I apologize, Scotty, if I'm naming the wrong person, but um, or Scott, not Scott. Scotty Pinballs, who was in the chat. But I know I've had someone say they own one of these Alpine Eagles and they really liked it. So I finally got a chance to try one of those on. Um, so actually, I, I talked to three different sales reps because you went over to Zenith yeah. like, right off. I went in and had someone. She helped me with the show part. Then I uh, I wandered around a little bit because I said I just wanted to browse. And then I went over to the Cartier section and there was another sales associate over there. But I wanted to see if they had any tank Americans and they did not. They had tank Francaise. And they had like the the Louis de Cartier and all that. And they had a ton of Santos. Yeah. But they didn't have the tank Americana. I wanted to see how that fit on the wrist because that's the, that's the long uh, long version of the tank. I'm not sure I like it, but I was curious how it might wear. So anyway, they didn't have that. So yeah, I rolled through the Omega section. Yeah, uh, I looked at it briefly. But, but it was just specifically because I wanted to see if they had an Ultra Deep. Because if they had an Ultra mm, Deep, I wanted to try it on. <laughs> because it's so huge. I, and then I went over and spent most of my time at Zenith. Yeah. And that guy was a watch guy. Like he knew yeah. all about the watch. He knew about the secret 222 in the vault. He knew <laughs> he knew everything. So that was really cool to talk to someone who was who who knew a lot about watches. And so I don't know what I have next in the list. So we're just gonna jump up oh, this watch. Now yeah. I think we did we both we both tried this we on. both tried this on. This red it, it kind of reminds me of your Oris red, though it is a different yeah, shade. A, Yours is darker. Yours is, is that, like ox blood. Right, and that's much brighter. It looks nice. Uh, it wouldn't have been for me. It's way too small for me. Uh, I uh, just from laying it over my wrist because the uh, yeah, yeah 37. It's a thirty-seven. But the uh, uh, the ladder bracelet, I I, I really kind of liked how the the look of the ladder bracelet and how it worked with that defy in particular. But uh, it was way too small to even dream of going over my uh, of, over my hand and onto my wrist. So I just kind of had to lay it over. Yeah, I they got this out. Uh, I guess again, or when was, they got yeah yeah they, when they, I asked about the ladder bracelet for a diff, on a different watch I've seen I've I watch I've been watching for a couple of years now on Jonas Shop because it's so cheap because they can't sell right but, uh, and they didn't have that they had that watch and we'll talk about it in a bit but they uh, they had it on the leather uh, and not the ladder so. He got this out so I could try the ladder bracelet out, and because I was like, "Is the ladder bracelet comfortable or not?" Because I've I've heard mixed things about the bracelet, mostly about the clasp, because the clasp isn't this newer clasp, and this clasp on the Chrono Masters is not. It's secure, but I don't love it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of hard to open. That one's a, a more simple clasp, but but the ladder bracelet is so seventies. I was like, "Is it too jingly jangly or what?" And actually, it breathes so well. It's a really cool look. Yeah, I thought it looked good. I thought it looked real nice. So, I mean, it's not, it, it's so open and stuff. It's not going to be like a, a hair ripper or anything. But this dial uh, looks way better in person yeah. than this. Uh, because this is a great, I think they describe it as gradient ruby. And the photo, I don't feel, lets you get a good sense of the gradient at all. The gradient is super obvious. It actually, I feel, looks darker in, in real, at least in real life artificial light than mm -hmm. it does in, the, in this image. So, anyway, uh, I thought that was really neat. Uh, uh, so actually, this one uh, might be one I would I would keep an eye out for just because it was pretty good. If you're looking for a time date, yeah, no, I, I, I liked I, it a lot. I, 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 it was it was just too small for me. Now this is a watch you uh, you checked out the Pilot Big Date Flyback. Yeah, and I uh, I don't know I'm not a big chronograph person, but uh, I took a look at it. It was really impressive. Uh, much more your size. Much more my size. The flyback was a lot of fun. Uh, to play with, uh, the pushers felt good, like really good. Uh, I, I've I've had a couple of chronographs where the pushers didn't really have that like heavy click and, and good feeling, but on this it did. I, I was really impressed by it. Uh, it actually did fit on me just barely with the with the uh, with the the band because it didn't mm -hmm. have a bracelet. Uh, it, it was like in the last hole, but uh, it, it was pretty comfortable. It'll, once again, like it, always, I'd probably have to reband it. But hmm. okay. Oh, I see. Tuna has shared. Last week, you saw a ladies' gold date just with diamonds for a mere seventy-five thousand pounds. Oh yeah, I'll get that for my wife's twenty-fifth anniversary. Hey, 
She might like it. She might. I don't know. Is she a watch person? No. Would she be with a 75,000 pound gold uh, diamond? They just... Probably not. I, you might be able to buy her into the hobby with a <laughs> nice enough... Well, I'm just saying it. I've stopped just, buying jewelry. It doesn't get worn. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> All right. So this was... Uh, by that. Okay, here we go. This was the watch that I wanted to try on the ladder bracelet. This is, I think, the A385. Uh, yeah, so this um, is the Smoky Dial 70s. Like, they, mm-hmm. I guess, it's more 69. I think of it as a 70s style. But there's this old 38X series of watches. They had a couple of others with this specific shape. It uses the old El Primero movement, not the, the newer one that's in the Chronomaster Sports and Chronomaster Originals. But... Um, when this came out, I remember I just thought, especially on the ladder, it looks really cool. Just like the photo shows, this strap is not does not match this dial. Yeah, it's not the same color. Now, yeah, it's a gradient dial, so of course you'd be like, well, what what would it match exactly? So it doesn't match any of it. It yeah, I'd say the closest thing in reality it actually matched was the color of the Fotina on the loom pips. It seemed to be that shade of brown. I think it looks good, but don't expect it to be identical like what I think maybe they were kind of going for, but they didn't want to spend a lot of money to figure it out. So that's why I would prefer it on the ladder. Bracelet. I think it would look better on the ladder. Now, just so you know, why? Why when I say this watch doesn't sell well, this watch on the bracelet has been for years on Joma Shop at 5,400, not 8,700. And on the strap, I think it's closer to 46. Yeah. So... They've been sold out of the Berlata bracelet for, uh, lately, but they still have this on the leather. You like the leather version. Anyway, uh, very cool looking watch, though. Very throwback. I think it would look really good on a ladder bracelet. So anyway, I uh, I tried it on just to see see how it would fit. But this is a, another one of those like 37 millimeter or yeah, 37 millimeter watches because this, I think, is a 38. So I was like, this would probably be fine for me. Tony didn't bother trying to no, I didn't. One. I didn't. I didn't. Put this one on. But um but anyway, yeah, I've always, I was always kind of thought this one was just a really cool looking uh, style. So I wanted to check it out and I finally got a chance to. Then um, they had the Mont Blanc watches right beside the Zenith watches. Mm-hmm. So I was looking over at those and I asked if I could see their Star, Star Legacy calendar pointer date watch just because it was, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a few different types of pointer dates. Not very many brands do them. But what I was interested in was, of course, it had the moon face, but it also it does the pointer date and the inside track of the dial, which is different than most of the time when I see pointer dates. They usually use the chapter ring. So I just thought it was an interesting configuration. Um, it's OK. It's really obviously really going for that dress watch sort of. Ele- it's very busy. Yeah, but it's very elegant. Um, I wasn't. Oh, it's not for me. I wouldn't get it, but it looked nice. They, yeah, it looked fine. Um, there was a, we don't have a, an image of it, but you try, you saw their like one, one hundredth of a second. Yeah. One yeah. Of their one skeletonized, of, uh, Zeniths. Yeah. They had the one hundred one one hundredth of a second, uh, chronographs. It, it was, it was pretty, it was neat. I just, I didn't like, I don't like the skeletonized, uh, so much. So I didn't really, I didn't really look at it that much. I just played with the one on one, one hundredth mm. of a second. Uh, timing for a little bit. Yeah. And um, I didn't, I didn't check that one out. Another Mont Blanc we both uh, got a look at, we didn't wear it, but they, uh, they pulled it out for us was this one, the, uh, the, the star legacy uh, chronograph. And the interesting thing about this, I don't know if this will blow up or not. Um, like, oh, oh no, it's an animated thing. No. Not, not on hotel internet. Don't do it. Don't Dennis. What were you thinking? No. Okay. Stop Stop, stop it, guys. Stop. Anyway, these uh these subdials, when you activate the it's a mono pressure chronograph, which mm-hmm. Mont Block, well, Mont Block there, they had a few of. And this one, so you push the button, starts the chronograph. The whole whole silver wheel spins. Yeah. So it's not using a hand, it's a disc, but it's not even just the center of the disc, the whole metal part spins. So just mechanically, it was really cool. Actually, I liked a lot about the layout. I did too. I, I was actually, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would mm-hmm. when he first pulled it out. Uh, just because the whole smaller face with dead space only works sometimes mm-hmm. for me on watches. A lot of times I find it kind of, 
off-putting. Yeah, like but this with the times just using this amount. And yeah. Then you've got, yeah, that's my biggest problem. Like the Breguet tradition now, mm -hmm. they all are that format. I think it's, it's like this huge waste of space to show a bunch of movement tech. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Ward has the, the bel canto. It's the same reason I don't like the bel canto. Is the time telling's like a third of the dial, and the right. rest of it is to show off their chiming mech. Which I, I mean, it's working for them, so they made the right decision. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah, but I, I like this because, like you said, with the the moving discs and everything, it was actually really cool. Yeah, so that one was fun. I see Tuna has noted that he thinks Mont Blanc is an interesting brand. I thought they had several very interesting mm -hmm. uh, items, and they had pins there, but I didn't ask to look at any of them. No, we talked about it a bit. I have a Mont Blanc pin I got off Jumma Shop a few years ago. I never talk about it because I don't do pins with Dennis because this is my only nice <laughs> pin. And I wasn't kidding when I, the, the guy, the sales guy, yeah, the sales guy was like, he really wanted a Mont Blanc pin. And I was like, I have one, uh, it's not a fountain. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a roller, it's a roller pin, not a ballpoint, but it's the gel type style. Yeah. And uh, it's okay, but honestly, I use a Bic more. So. So I know I, I decided I'm not getting into pins. That one just sits on the desk. Um, and I don't know what else. Oh, I must have still had these things loaded up from my my searching. So yeah, yeah, because I was playing. I put links in the video description to the places we went. Right. So you can go and check those out. So uh, Bockendorf's wasn't the only watch selling jeweler at the Galleria Dallas. However, it was the only one with any of the notable brands when I checked the website before we drove down. Yeah. So because they had some, they had the other the normal kind of. And then yeah, and then everywhere. the guy there was like, well, you know, they're they're a competitor, but if you want to go and check out Eisman's. Uh, which we at first thought might have been at the mall, but it was not. It was at a different mall. <laughs> so yeah. Eisman's, uh, because they 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 co-shared a few brands, but um, it was Yuli Nardon and Parmigiani being there. But I was like, ah. Eh. And he did say they did have the Parmigiani Tonda PFs in stock. So I guess if you're in the Dallas area and you want to check out a, a, a Tonda PF to see how it wears – that would be an opportunity. I wanted to, I, I would have been more motivated to maybe do the drive if there was also a Chapek dealer, because I want to compare the Tonda PF to the Antarctic, because those are the two integrated bracelet styles that I like the most. Yeah. And I've heard the Chapek wears better, but the Bookendorf's guy said he thought the Tonda PF wore very well, but I also have like baby wrists. So I feel like my wrist size shrunk the, the more I met people and they put on rock, wrist, uh, I put on wrist things. Oh yeah. Watches. Those are called watches. As they put more watches on me, I, was, I felt like my wrist was getting smaller <laughs> uh, the judgment might've been getting higher. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of that. Um, just cause the women had larger wrists. Didn't we? Look, it's just <laughs> my little itty bitty stick wrists. So, um, they did not have a uh, Omega Moonwatch white dial. I asked. They did, yeah. And that was one of the things that was an interesting point of discussion with the with the gentleman at Bookendorf's because he was like, yeah, we, I think he said they hadn't gotten gotten any or they got one. It was, it was a, to me, shockingly yeah. low number. I think he said they had not they received it. They hadn't gotten it. one yet. They had not received it yet. And there was, there was a place further north in Dallas that had got one. And he goes, and of course it sold out instantly. Yeah. So they don't have uh, it. The one he was talking about where he had, where they'd gotten, where, where Bookenders had gotten one was the terracotta dial that he had. Oh yeah. We talked a little bit about those aqua terra. So, so uh, long time viewers who might be tuning in or watching the recording may recall a couple of years ago, I think maybe three at this point, uh, watches and Wonders. I can't remember if it's watches and wonders, 2022 or 2021. They came out with those colorful aqua terrors and everyone was like, Oh, this is to compete with the Stella dials, uh, that, uh, Rolex did with the oyster perpetual line. Anyway, they were really cool. And then they weren't anywhere. They weren't at any stores. I bought online Greg through, well, through Joma shop, uh, my, my Omega Seamaster 300M. Mm -hmm. I went to Carrots. Is that what? It, carrots. Yeah, Carrots in Kansas City. Uh, because to size it, because I could not break the Loctite. No matter how much hair dryer I used to heat that thing up, I could not. I could not get those screws out. So I paid them to size it. And I asked while I was there. I was like, "Let me check out some of these watches. Where are the new Aqua Terras? Bear in mind, folks, this was ten months after the reveal. Ten months. And they go, "Oh." Nobody has those. Like I hadn't seen them come up used or anything, but I didn't expect them to come up gray yet because I figured they were too popular and you'd have to wait a while. But I hadn't been shopping for them. I'm like, right. you, none? 
And they go, no, they're not. They've not. They've not been released. They uh, there's. They said we we think we'll get them at the start of the new year, which they kind of did. They started to get them a little bit later. Anyway, as we learned a lot more. So from the from the sales rep, because he's like, no, yeah, but actually, as he understands it, but from what he heard in the industry, there was an issue. It was the date window. Uh, and I didn't remember this because it's been so long since I looked at the original renders, but the date window on the on the I'm gonna call them the min size ones because there were smaller ones that had a different configuration on the right. date window. Um, but on the bigger watches, they it was a cutout. You think like how Hamilton does their date windows, it's just a cutout. And I guess Omega was taken aback by how visceral the criticism was. Was why are you charging us like five plus thousand dollars and we don't even get a framed date window? It's just like cut out. So they wanted to address the criticism, but that meant they had to re-engineer the dial. So they went and they had to, I don't know if they've stepped it or put in a frame. I haven't, I I I saw his, but I don't remember yeah. it anymore. I think they framed it. And uh, and so that was the main thing. I had assumed it was a supply chain issues, because that was back when we were still seeing a lot of supply chain, pandemic-related supply chain issues. But Purportedly, it was a reconfiguration issue that that resulted in that. On top of it, just like you've heard all this criticism that, or or at least the rumor mill is that Rolex is struggling to do the Pepsi bezels on the GMT Master Twos. The that that's why you're not seeing a bunch used because purportedly they're not making very many because they're really struggling with the color. The same thing is happening with the red version right. of the Aquaterra. And the sales rep was wearing a red version Aquaterra. And he goes, before he got the job there, he bought that watch. And it's been the only red one they've received. They still don't have any other. They have the other colors. But as you recall, the well, maybe you don't recall. But as I recalled, as he recalled, the, for, the method of applying the red is different than how they do all the other colors. It's a different like PVD versus CVD sort of thing. So because of that, Purportedly, Omega is struggling mightily to keep the red consistent, and they don't want them to look different, which I understand. It's like, yeah. <laughs> this this isn't, oh, look, each piece is unique. No, they, like, if you <laughs> fell in love with one way it looked, you don't want it to look a different shade of red. So that's been a struggle for them, too. I was always most fascinated by the by the saffron one, which is kind of that yellow, well, mm -hmm. it's the color of saffron, so kind of that yellowy-orange uh, one. But which they that's not a problem to get. The red one still remains a problem, but the rest are not. But yeah, so that was an interesting thing to learn about. Uh, he also they are a JLC dealer. We have a JLC dealer, so yeah. I didn't think much of it uh, other than like I saw like the JLC I've owned for years was there, and they only had like really simple reversos and a number of the master control watches. Yeah, and they which, and even in total they didn't have the JLC right. section. Was it was like, tiny. It, it was, was like it was tiny, like the Montblanc si yeah. section. It was really small. It was, <laughs> it was part of one case. Yeah, and Except for Montblanc was technically larger because it had the, it had the pins. pin section yeah. was larger than the JLC watch section. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, I mentioned that and. I, I had said, you know, I, I really liked a lot of the reversos that came out of last year's Watches and Wonders because they all look, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, it's reverso, like play it safe JLC. But they some of them, as you might you all might recall, were really cool chronograph reversals, really, really well integrated, you know, elegant style uh, chronos. And he goes, we don't get them. We, and kind of shared how, like, there's another place, I think further south in Texas. And he's like, they get all the new JLC stuff and we we don't get the fancy JLC stuff. We just get these basic models. And he was like, I don't know why. And I would agree. I'm like, I, I don't know why either. How, how It's an interesting question that I hadn't really, because I that's not my side of the business, but it's like. Some ABs are more equal than others. Yeah. It, but it's like, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to. I mean, Dallas is a big spot. This wasn't like just like five miles away. So it's like. Yeah, yeah. well, it wasn't even in Dallas. I mean, and yeah. this, Texas is a big state. It was like hours of driving away. And so it was just, it's confusing to me. It's the same thing back to Vacheron and the Tuneau case. It's like, mm -hmm. why are these only in three? I guess in a way, maybe it makes sense in their instance where they probably don't sell a lot of them. Yeah. But how can they sell a lot of them if no one can look at them? See, and I was surprised with, back to the Vacheron, I was surprised when she mentioned that it was just New York, Miami, and, and Beverly Hills, mm. because because in all honesty, I would have 
figured there would have been some one of the other, I mean, the Dallas or Chicago, one of the more interior of the country spots would have been in the list. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Yep. But anyway, it was fun. I it was fun. Oh, it was, it was neat for a great day. Yeah, we great killed morning. we killed hours doing that. Yeah. So had a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, we'll be doing our, our pinball thing here in about ten minutes or so and then that'll be my life now. <laughs> See, I'm sorry, I was looking ahead. Scotty Pinball asking to finish the tour at Swatch. I did not though. We don't have Swatch. Uh, we don't. We don't have a major boutique Swatch in, in Kansas City, so we probably should have. I just there's nothing that I was wanting to try. Too many I I've seen too many broken moon swatches online. And I, I, the un, I shouldn't care, but the unserviceability of the System 51, uh, yeah. which is the Blanc Pond collab uh, movement, has always made me not be interested in that watch at all. Because, I don't know, quartz movements, the odds of them lasting are really high and mechanical movement that you can't fix. And that was a really pricey watch. And I'm really cheap. I feel weird saying that after looking at, you know, $30,000, $50,000 Vacherons. But yeah. I, I wore a fifty thousand dollar Vacheron. My, my my wife's response when I told her was just ouch. And then she just said, "Just sell, just sell all the vehicles." <laughs> more like more like more like I'd have to sell her and the children. <laughs> <sighs> That'd be uh, that might not be legal or in on these parts. Probably isn't. <laughs> Probably that human bondage. I think it's frowned upon. In Typically, general, even for even for watches. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for the show. I'm not going to go a full hour. Just thought it would be a fun little recap. Hopefully the sound wasn't too, too awful. I know the lighting's terrible. We did what we could with the hotel space. Um, but I'll be back to my regularly scheduled normal Saturday uh, live stream times next weekend. If you found the video even remotely tolerable, hit like. I've lowered the standard. So just if it's remotely tolerable, you are obligated to hit like. Otherwise, you're not obligated to hit like. But You need to back up. You're shaking the screen. Oh, it's because my knee, I'm kicking the <laughs> kicking the table. They're like, after that shaking, you ain't getting no like. You're getting a dislike. <laughs> and that's fair. Everyone's getting and that's seasick fair. all and of a sudden. Fair. We understand. It's, and that's fair. Oh, gosh. Oh, someone had you asked him about pinball. Uh, all right. You want you want a little bit? Uh, everyone else who just wants watches, you can go ahead and disconnect now. Scotty asks, Princess Bride or Ninja Eclipse? Just kidding. We played both yesterday. Yeah, we played everything new yesterday except for Texas. Both of the games... Are okay. So like I didn't have a negative or I kind of did. Like if I like if you were to tell me which one of these two, if I had to, if I was like, you're going to get one of them, it would be Ninja Eclipse. Probably. I didn't have the same, it didn't have the same, none of them have the same bad vibes like we had last year with Galactic Pink. No, 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 no. Ninja Eclipse of all of them, and we we already have play, other than Texas Chainsaw Massacre, we played Looney Tunes, and they're the same layout. But they do have different rules, so I need to disclose that. Uh, so they, so the experience could end up being different. But I'm not sure we're going to play Texas. The lines have been bad. Uh, and again, we're not going to get enough time on it to really feel out the rules. Ninja Eclipse is the most interesting or unique, I'd say unique, most unique layout here of the new stuff. Yeah. Like we've tried Elton John. We tried the Ripley edition of Alien. Not that that was going to be a different layout. We've done the Looney Tunes. We did, we did Labyrinth, we barbecue. did the barbecue, we did the premium version of Jaws. Uh, so like with all of that stuff, Ninja Eclipse is definitely the one that got the most bold with trying a layout. Now, bold doesn't mean good. <laughs> yeah. So it was, I don't know if people are like long-term if you'd really like all the shots on that because it's very unfamiliar in terms of how they set it up. But the tech in it, like the ideas behind it were very, very cool. That said, they had to reset our game on it because the ball went into a in, into a scoop and then it didn't know what to do. So, um, so you know that that is what it is. This guy's also asked, "What's the best? Uh, what's best of show? Labyrinth so far." Tony really liked Labyrinth. That one didn't click as well for me, uh, though the theme integration is easily the best one. Oh, for yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the best player, I'd have to I'd have to say Jaws. I know it's that's it's a pedestrian answer because Stern knows what they're doing and Elwin is the it best does in play the biz. good. It plays but, good. But uh it 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 plays really, really well. Um I personally have found and we're Tony and I are tomorrow. 
<laughs> you won't have to see us, but we have our podcast up. We're going to record the podcast tomorrow for Eclectic Gamers Podcast, and that'll probably come out Monday unless I edit it the night. I'm not editing it before we leave. We're, yeah. gonna, we're going to record before we leave, and then we got to drive back, and it's a seven and a half hour trip. So I'll probably get it out. I took Monday off. It'll it'll come out, guys. There's a link to our YouTube for Eclectic Gamers in the sh- in the video description, by the way. But that's not where the podcast comes out. So you guys have to do some searching. You have to figure it out. <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll go over all of that then. But yeah, my my overall takeaway uh, on on that is I, I probably have to lean that way. Elton John plays really really well. I f- I found Looney Tunes and Barbecue to be extremely long playing, yeah. but um, but I might just be the best pinball player you've ever met. I'm not sure. I am sure that's not the answer. So no, that, that was the guy we were behind on Looney Tunes. The, the guy on, but to be fair, I got like within forty million of it. You did get within forty million. Of it. That's true. Um, but he also. I've seen like four player games that did not last as long as he played by yeah, himself. He was very, very good. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd still say Jaws, though that's been out for a few months. So, I mean, I'd already played the pro, but this was my first chance on the premium. So anyway, I, we haven't, I might hit some of the homebrews today. I haven't decided yet uh, what I want to do. I feel like we've done our podcast obligation, at this yeah. point, which is great. We try and, we try and front load that. Uh, since we use Patreon dollars to uh, pay for the trip, we try and make sure we cover all the new stuff so we can talk about it. So, anyway. There'll be more detail on that there, but uh, that's it. You should see me here next week. Until then, my name is Dennis. I'm Tony. He probably won't be on next week. Probably not. But but if, if you follow the Eclectic Gamers on Facebook or Instagram, I've been posting. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of social media stuff for that. So if you're into the pinball side, check that out because he's handling that social media piece. And he's doing a lot on it. That's it. Cool. Goodbye. See ya.